Hello and welcome back to Compiler Programming. Uh, over the last couple of episodes, we uh, made very good progress uh, towards creating our own executables. Uh, for now, we are just trying to replicate this uh, minimal executable we created in one of the previous episodes. Um, and in the last one, uh, we did the optional header and uh, the section headers. Uh, between the videos, the only thing I did is, uh, so we did this on the video and I just uh, added two more sections that are exactly the, the same structure uh, of camera and then you have to terminate the list uh, with an empty uh, section header, which means now we have fully um, implemented that and I have this opened in Pepper for um, both of the executables and now you can see that uh, they are uh, matching completely. So offsets match, names match, everything is exactly at, as it's supposed to be. Okay, so this leaves us uh, with actually uh, writing something into the sections. And uh, we will try to do so today. Now, some of them I will just fill in with bytes uh, instead of providing proper data structures because we will eventually uh, get rid of them. Maybe even in this episode already we'll get rid of them, but uh, for now I just wanted to have a file that is uh, binary identical to the one produced by the uh, C compiler. Uh, and this means, yeah, we need to just output everything that was there originally. Okay. So we have import directory. Now this is where uh, things start to get uh, tricky. Uh, we need to figure out where these things are located. And uh, this is where, yeah, where things start to get interesting. So we have this uh, import directory and import uh, address table, basically. Uh, and this offset here shows us where it is in the file itself. So inside minimal.exe, uh, this entry is located at 6F8 and the actual uh, import table is at uh, 720. So if we, uh, let me open another editor uh, to actually show this maybe in better way. Uh, let's do this and this and this. This is also what I will use for binary comparison. It uh, is really bad at, you know, the whole high DPI display. So it looks pretty crappy, at least uh, when I look at it, but still has okay function functionality for what we want. So I will uh, stick with it. Anyhow, so what I wanted to show is this is the main uh, kind of place where we put all of our data segments. So there is uh, our data and uh, I data, which is import data and our believe is debug stuff. Uh, we can actually look at our own uh, things to figure out uh, what those things are or go to uh, probably we also will need um, SDN uh, to tell us what those things are. Image section header. Okay, this is what we want. I think at some point they even list those here. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Image directory entry loaded image. No, this is this does not give me. Uh, really what I want. So what if I search like this? Mm. That's also not really, really what I want. Okay, uh, doesn't, doesn't matter. Uh, the important part is where what goes. And if we look at uh, this stuff, so this is would be the easiest to start with, and this is our uh, code. So I know it's a bit hard to see, but unfortunately I cannot really zoom this. Uh, this stuff is 
the shows us the disassembly. So you can see the command here is sub RSP byte uh, plus uh, 28, which is a command that we uh, saw before. Then we have uh, call relative. Uh, yeah, I think this is uh, the full command. And then we have CC, which is uh, int uh, three, so interrupt. So yeah, this is our code. Again, for now, I will just uh, copy paste those bytes and write them out on the right location. So what is the right location? That's an interesting question. It should be at this offset and this offset is actually uh, sort of known to us. It should be, I think, done in reverse. Like we first should figure out where we need to put this and then uh, fill in this uh, base of code. But since we have it, at least for uh, pre-calculated for this particular executable, we need to use it. So what we want to do is to move our uh, buffer occupied stuff to, to that position, because in the buffer, we just put data to the end and then track what was the last byte that we put. Uh, but since there are, as you can see, there are a lot of zeros here, uh, we uh, have to uh, move it to the right offset. And the reason there, is, there are a lot of zeros is again, because uh, this, um, there is a file alignment uh, constant and you need to align everything to 512 bytes, so to 200 in hex. And since we are past this 200 marker here, we need to go to the next alignment, which would be 400. And this is where we put uh, our few assembly instructions. And then again, we have a lot of uh, space with just zeros. Um, before we go get to the meaty part where um, this debug data is located and uh, import address stuff is there as well. There's also this section, which I'm not sure what it is. Uh, we can actually look up, I guess, uh, what it does for us, but for now it's not really important. I th this is also probably either debug or exception information. We will see later on what it is and we can actually check it here. So yeah, so this P data, actually we can look at it here. Well, maybe we, maybe we don't need this one for now. Um, we can look at it here. So this is P data section, R data and text. Text is definitely code. Um, and as far as this goes, let's try to figure out what it is. Yeah, so uh, P data is uh, exception uh, stuff, and all the other things they leave into our data, which I think is uh, read only. And we can verify that it is read only by looking at these uh, characteristics. So our data is uh, initialized data and memory, although this is also initialized data and memory. So yeah, let's do uh, p data and text because they will be the simplest ones. P data I will just also copy uh, as it is without any changes because I'm not uh, really so yeah this looks good to me. Fortunately I didn't save that script to and do this automatically. So that was my mistake. Uh, probably should have done that, but oh well, it happens. This is not too bad though, because there aren't many bytes in this uh, and zeros we don't actually need because we will just append bytes there. Okay. So as I mentioned, now we need to move our buffer to be at position uh, 400, which is uh, right after the headers, and we know uh, where it is by using this. Uh, a nice thing to do would be to add an assertion that uh, exe um, buffer occupied is less than uh, base of code, and then assign. 
Uh, it should never happen that we go over, but maybe once we do more calculations dynamically, we'll have a issue here and it will catch uh, us from trying to override the data, have a kind of buffer overflow problems that are plaguing a lot of uh, C applications. Okay, so now we do exe buffer occupied is this stuff and we can start appending things. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to do it as an array. I think I will just use individual uh, bytes to be honest and be happy with that. Before though, I want to do this. very exciting but has to be done okay and this is a main thing that we'll probably start replacing uh, soonish which is our code that we can uh, generate cool so buffer append s8 i guess uh, yeah append s8 would be fine and we just do this for all of them. Da -da 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 -da. A bunch of bytes. Dun -dun -dun. Do a. And it uh, really helps here that I roughly understand where the instruction begins and where instruction end, because uh, it's just make sure that I understand that I didn't actually make a mistake, or at least I shouldn't make a mistake. Okay, so this is our stuff. Again, this is int three. Uh, this is a call and then this is uh, sub rsp28 okay and probably this is x but i'm not sure uh, we now have our section with code uh, now we are ready to do the same to the section with uh, p data and in between we'll sandwich the complicated our data section because in reality it contains uh, several uh, several things okay so let's do the same so first I will add a comment just so we know where we are this is a text segment this is our data no, this is pdata, and we want to do the same thing. So, do, 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 do. This, this goes here, this goes here, uh, two zeros, then 10, another two zeros, then F8, and then 20. If I made a mistake, it's not too bad. We will just, as I said, do a binary diff on the file and everything is fine. Uh, here we do exactly the same thing where we say the buffer occupied is uh, this time p data section header uh, section offset so pointer to raw data. This is the thing we can use. Uh, pointer to raw data. Maybe uh, here for consistency we also do the same thing where we say um text section pointer to our data just so we have some kind of uniform setup but honestly i don't believe we will be able to do any kind of loops and unification here anyway so it doesn't uh, really matter okay. naturally i forgot to specify where i want to append my bytes to so that's not good and something that we need to fix but it is easy to do so. Okay. We are even compiling. 
So that's always a good, good thing. Now, we have the last and the most tricky, which is a P data segment. And the reason it is tricky is because uh, unlike this debug data, which I probably said will not even just remove this section completely, and it should not affect the functionality of the executable, but in, uh, in our data, uh, we have we have to actually output real things and we need to you know, figure out inside the uh, VNNT headers uh, what are the right uh, structs for them, the same way we did for the headers. Uh, there is definitely a defined struct for uh, this uh, address, for th both this stuff and for this stuff. And because we know the name of the fields, it probably will be not too hard to find um, you know, the, the right struct that we can use. Okay, our data section pointer to our data, that sounds good. And now we need to do this. So, original first sunk. I hope it's called like this. Okay, we do have this. It's called uh, image import descriptor. And there are even a bunch of comments about it but probably we should go to MSDN instead and look up there. Uh, you are called image import descriptor. Let's do that. Apparently I misspelled MSDN. Uh, MSDN. So there is image data directory. But that's not exactly what I want. Uh, image directory entry to data, that's the debug stuff. So there is some kind of more okay. Yeah, this describes how the LLs are working. Image infer descriptor not very big image to say something. Uh, each image description take up three points to two essentially identical arrays. These arrays have been called by several names, but the two most common names are import address table and import name table. Okay, so we have original first thunk that points to array of uh, hint names, and then you have address table uh, that is actually uh, the one that's uh, where the addresses of the functions are put into. Uh, both arrays have elements of type image sign data, which is a pointer size union, uh, corresponds to one function. Okay, we need to put a zero element at the end. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's, I guess, start cranking at it and seeing what we have. And before we do that, I want to look at uh, this data directory. So these are, this is one we already have, so this is perfectly fine. Uh, but these two and these ones is the one that we need to actually implement, which is uh, fine. Debug stuff we will uh, just write down and copy as bytes as well, so this is uh, not a problem, but these two we actually need to do something about. Okay, and let's start with import address table because this is the one that is at least in this executable laid out at the very start of the section. And for import address table, we can look at this. And I guess uh, this is the stuff. Although I'm not sure. Offset is 720, and this is offset 6F8. Um, which is not what I would expect it to be. 
because if I look at this stuff, so let's let's try to understand uh, what we have here. This is our full R data, and at the very start of it, with the size of um, 16 bytes, there should be import address table. And this is what it says. And I guess this is, since this is a little Indian, it points to 2130, uh, which means it is uh, here. Okay, well, that kind of makes sense. So we are just pointing to where it actually is expected to go. Hmm. Need more information. I think there was a nice uh, diagram. I'm not sure if it's on Wikipedia uh, actually or somewhere else. I saw a really, really nice uh, structure. So there's this one. Um, but this is no, not the one that I was thinking about. So no, this is also not what I'm thinking. Okay, I guess we are looking at this one, although I'm not sure how useful it will be in the end. So this, no, this is just the, the top stuff that we already have. So what if we say MSDN image, uh, sorry, import address table, will that help us figure out what's supposed to go into where? Okay, let's go to uh, P format and try to go from there. Because here there is this import library format that actually tells us uh, how it's supposed to work. Engine raises archive while building the exporting application. Cool. So this is definitely what we will need. Let's try to match this to what we see over here. So this is our I data, I guess. And then This is going to be a bit trickier than I anticipated, but it's fine. We can figure it out. Name type. Archive library format. Yeah, that's that's not the stuff that we need, I guess. What if I search for the data section? Okay. So four four four. Import directory table. The import information which describes the remainder of the uh, import the import directive consists of an import directories one entry for each DLA DLL to which the image refers the last directory entry is empty okay and then the lookup table itself is uh, 64 bit numbers that will be actually replaced with the the pointers to the right thing 
Okay. And then we have a hint name table. So hint name table is the easiest one. This is what we have over here, I believe. So the first uh, two bits are two bytes are hint. So this is uh, this stuff, and then you have name, and then you have uh, trailing byte if uh, this is not uh, like if the string is uh, not has doesn't have any even length. So this part I understand uh, pretty well. We have another pointer to the same location. So we have another pointer uh, to here. So maybe it just uh, uses the same location. Basically, executable will overwrite uh, this stuff uh, to save space, maybe. Um, but the other stuff is what um, I'm not exactly certain about. Well, let's start by just putting stuff that we know. Uh, first thing is uh, what? This is called import address table, import directory table, to um, do. -do, -do. begins with import directory table, which describes the remainder of import information. This import directory table contains address information that is used to resolve fixed up stuff. Mm -hmm. So this is a relative virtual address of the import address table to the contents of the import lookup table until the image is bound. Import address table. The structure and content are identical during binding uh, entries are overwritten. Okay. I see. Well, let's put some bytes into our executable. We are at the right position and uh, we can do things. So I believe, so zero if not bound, minus one if Bound, uh, minus one if no forwarders, name, and first thunk. I have to say this is mildly confusing to me, but we can figure it out. So we probably don't need this stuff here. Let me get back to these things. So we have thunk, okay, that's not what we want. What if I search for address of data? P image thunk data, okay. Uh, image thunk data forwarder string uh functional function ordinal address of data okay this is the 32-bit version and this is the 64-bit version but we actually i don't think we care about this much because um 
it will be something different. Interesting. I guess we will start with just putting bytes and then figuring out uh, what we want to do about them. Let's remove these things and we say that uh, address whatever, uh, s32 address rv or iat uh, relative virtual address is 0x2130 makes me calculate this as usual and this is what we uh, put at the very start I guess I need to go to here so this definitely goes into here what are the other zeros and what goes afterwards i'm actually not that sure so this line is um all that it has there basically so we say exe uh, buffer append s32 of exe buffer and then iat rva okay now we say uh, we move it and we move it to be plus zero extend takes me to not hard code this and this actually we can take uh, from the table above uh, but for now i just want to make progress because we have been stuck on this uh, for a while now. Now, uh, the next thing that goes into that uh, section is debug information. And this stuff I will just literally uh, copy paste. So the size of it is uh, 1C, which is 16 plus C. Uh, let's just just do it here so it's uh, 28 bytes okay we can do that so this would be 8 bytes 16 bytes 20 bytes 28 um, bytes I guess no this is 24 bytes so this is 16 this is 24 so it goes to here I guess and we can verify that uh, by turning it into array and saying um, s8 debug bytes is this stuff. Yeah, that's not very nice. Maybe I do have it still in Firefox. I don't know if it, oh, it actually does retain the history of the console so I can just use this stuff and be happy cool so we have these debug bytes at some point we will probably need to figure out what they are but for now we don't and then we say for 32 i is 0 i is less than static array size of debug bytes plus plus i and then i just say buffer append s8 of debug bytes i let's see if that builds uh yeah here we need to say exe buffer that looks good and i also want to assert that i correctly copy pasted so let's just say assert that a static array size of this is uh, one uh, c And actually, let's try to run our program to see what happens. 
uh, it is not happy because we have this test open but we can close it and at least it writes uh, something so i also copy pasted the bytes correctly which is good next what is next on our agenda we now have uh, this stuff and the only uh, thing left is to put um, the imports and imports are located at f8 so this is f and this is 8 this is pretty confusing the way it lays out that so here obviously is an address that is uh, pointing back to here that is very very strange and then there is another one which is uh, 213E which is here well, at least this one points to the so this is the name of the DLL this I at least understand uh, but 21 Ah, 2120, it actually points to this thing, which points to 2130, to here. So there is a bunch of pointers to each other, and we need to figure out what they all mean. I'm also a bit confused about all of this stuff, because I'm not sure who actually refers to these things, and if we even need to put them in, uh, in the executable because they don't seem to be referred to from here maybe they are uh, part of the stuff we put in uh, debug bytes and we actually shouldn't have a debug session otherwise it will uh, not do the right thing there is definitely an address here which is 22c uh, but yeah so it's something here do we have any other addresses here? Not sure, not sure. So yeah, it, it is possible that we'll also need to drop the uh, debug section and we actually cannot do binary comparisons uh, that way. Hmm. That's not very good. Okay. Uh, characteristics original first thunk so it is possible that this data is literally just uh, strings and then they are pointed to from other uh, stuff Yeah, I guess this is how it works. We have this name, and this name is uh, pointing to, for example, here. And then original first tank is pointing also somewhere over here i wish there was a nice diagram that just showed who goes after what and where let's uh, spend just a couple more minutes trying to find something decent like this uh, v format uh, pdf so is there something nice there is this stuff, maybe that would be good, except it has terrible resolution. 
This seems to be good. Uh, if it showed what I wanted, it would be good. Ah, never. Okay. So let's look at this stuff. We have uh, code, imports, and data. What do we... Oh. No, just give me my file. It's a bit inconvenient to, to deal with, but we can deal with that stuff. Okay, so how does it work? We have this uh, offset. Okay, this is address. Uh, we don't care about this. This says uh, 23C and it points to what? Okay, how do I read this stuff? Okay, so we have they have several imports. We only need one, so it is uh, one of these, and at least we can tell what is the size of the actual struct, and the size seems to be this is sixteen, so this is uh, twenty bytes. Um, that looks like. 20 bytes, I guess. And it says that 23C is the address of the uh, first thunk, whatever that is. And 24C, the address is RVS, that's fine. Uh, we have, if I only was able to tell where 24C is here, that would be really, uh, really helpful to know. So we have then 27, oh, let me bring up the editor. I guess uh, time date uh, stamp is zero. Uh, forwarder chain is also zero, otherwise this uh, here would not be zero. And then I have name and name points to uh, 2078, so I guess that would be right over here. And then I have uh, first thunk, which is 2068, which is just up from that. Okay, given that knowledge, let's try to project it at to what we have. Um, so 2130, so this is uh, this stuff, this doesn't look like what I want. Uh, 20F8. Ah, yeah, okay. The actual thing is indeed located at 20F8. So this is how I need to look at this. So the first thing is 2120, so it is uh, this stuff. And that is, that is what? That is original first thunk to unbound 
IIT. Okay. Then we have two uh, 32 bit zero values. Then we have uh, 21. So we have, then we have this stuff. And uh, this stuff tells us what will be the. Yeah, so this is the name of the library. Okay, things start to make sense little by little. And then it has a first thunk, which is RVA to import address table. And that is uh, just uh, 2000 which is uh, this thing and this thing points to 2130 uh, which is this stuff it looks to me like this is unnecessarily complicated and a lot of these things could be laid out one after another instead of jumping all over the place but maybe that's how the algorithm works inside of uh, I guess uh, MSVC which is what we're using for compiling but at least now I'm starting to to make sense of this and here if we look at uh, what is it? Image, image, image. There was this. Yeah, image import by name. Yep. So this is what we will also need. And this is uh, where it uh, points to. Okay. I guess we are slowly making uh, progress image import descriptor uh, image thunk data order string address of data yeah so Forward the string. Okay, we probably also need this, but I'm not exactly certain yet how we're gonna use it. But let's get this out there and try to make sense of all of this. Okay, so yeah, these fields look to be zero because they don't even uh, put anything in them. Uh, let's recheck that we understand the chain of events and then continue. We jump to uh, 20 F8 to here. And this is where we expect to get uh, one of image import descriptors. So it points to an array of this structure. Okay, so somewhere is supposed to be a bunch of zeros. And I guess uh, this is the bunch of zeros that we are looking for which is a zero entry of this stuff, which is also uh, 20 bytes. Yeah, so we have 20 here and we have 20 here. Good, that starts to make sense. And this is what we can start, I guess, uh, slowly writing out into our executable. Okay, let's say S32, um, import data directory uh, array or 
uh, file offset is uh, zero. Uh, well, we can do our data section pointer to raw data uh, plus zero x uh, f8, right? That's what we have over here somewhere. So this uh, 20 f8, that means that the file address will be uh, this stuff. Okay, we can move buffer to there. Actually, let's not even assign this and just say that this is sort of I data, sort of. And now we can write one of those here. So let's uh, do that. We can copy one of the things that we used previously for this purpose. Okay, like this, like this, like this, and like this. And this would be called uh, image import descriptor. It's fine. And let's try to put something there. So looking at this stuff, the first thing that goes in there is a uh, 2120, which is something I don't yet understand what that is. So this is, and um, this is first original third, first thunk. Okay. So I guess this is where the address of uh, this stuff is going to be once it is loaded. And we can probably verify that uh, by looking at uh, this stuff. So if I disassemble the minimal exe, then I should be able to figure out what is the offset of that. I can look at this editor then and it should tell me. Okay, so this adds uh, FF15. Yeah, okay. We need the calculator again. And in hex we say so this is probably what we want, call, call relative ff7. So we do ff7 and that seems a bit too far, although maybe not necessarily. Uh, we need to do plus nine Actually, no, plus E. So what I'm trying to figure out uh, is where does this point to in the file? Because this uses the address of the exit process uh, function that is put into our executable at runtime. And that thing is patched into some location in this section. And I'm trying to understand in which location in this section it is patched so that I can uh, understand if I'm uh, understanding the rest of this stuff correctly. And to do that, uh, I need to take the address after this um, instruction, which will be, so probably we need to say zero uh, F and so plus F is a thousand and six. This does not make much sense. So I probably screwed up something somewhere. Because this would be, for example, loaded at, at address. Let's, let's open it in, uh, in Visual Studio actually. 
So we do dev env uh, build minimum. Do, 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 do. And I want to guess step into. Okay. This is what we are trying to look at. And I guess I will have to do manual stuff here. So this is the address. And what I want to know is what will be the, the difference between this stuff and uh, instruction pointer. So I need to say read minus this, or actually other way around. Forty eighty seven. Now I'm really, really confused. Okay. I'll actually know this is this not not the right way uh, or maybe it's doing something wrong or I copied something wrong because this is uh, 1009 and this is uh, 2000 so the difference is it did uh, 997 um, but if this starts at a thousand so basically it calls something at the very very start of the so it calls this thing which probably will be patched to what we want to have okay let's let's just do stuff okay we have this thing which is very easy to sorry it should be this one 21 20. let's just start with hard with uh, hard coding things and then we can continue uh, with better understanding of what it is okay, so the original first song is uh 2010 or 20 21 20. uh 21 20. okay then the next field is we have two zeros, so these uh, four byte zeros and these four byte zeros. Then we have 21 3e, and that is going to be a name. Twenty-one 3e. Okay, that is good. Next stuff is we have just uh, 2000 and this is what how is it called here uh, these IAT has actual addresses okay so now that starts to make sense as we saw we will call this address when we like in the debug that we saw just now in, in assembly we were calling uh, this stuff so this is uh, where the thing will be located. Okay, that is progress. I guess I'm starting to understand this a bit better. I remember last time I was doing this, it also took a long time to figure out and it's very easy to forget how all of this works. Okay, good. Now we have 2130 to deal with. Oh, 21, 3e. There is also 2130 somewhere. But first we need to output, all zeros will be output directly, so for now we don't need to do that. Uh, but we have 20, 
120 uh, which is uh, this stuff and this stuff is image thunk data and I think these uh, thunks are also um, yeah they they are also null terminated that this is what goes here and into here I guess we set the um, address of data which is p image import by name okay so this this starts to make sense so if right now we uh, jump to plus 120 then we can do this we can do image thunk data 64 and here we can say that the address of data is uh, actually this u1 address of data I think I could just not specify the field and it will go into the right place so this will be 0x2130 uh, which is uh, this stuff and here I have one of these so we have word which is 16 uh, bits so two bytes and this is this stuff and then we have the name which is this uh, name that is aligned to uh, to one byte uh, to two bytes sorry okay this seems good we do this stuff 2130 Let's jump to 2130. 2130. And I actually will not uh, use this struct because it has this uh, char name and we need to uh, put in the string, which we also don't really have a good way to do right about now. But it is fine. We will uh, figure something out. So uh, we first do buffer append s16 to exe buffer and the hint is interesting so let's look at mstn because i'm not sure what image import by name is mstn image import by name uh -oh. we don't really say that I'm not sure why image invert by name actually goes here if there is no such thing on this page but I guess um, okay what is the hint for okay basically we can put zero or we can put this thing because we just know it but later we will put zero okay so the zero x uh zero one sixteen two four and they to do remove this and use name instead remove this or set to zero Okay, now we need to put exit process in there. And exit process is uh, actually aligned correctly, so that's why there are no empty bytes, I think, here. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, I guess we do S8. Um, how is it called? That would be function name function name is 
uh, exit process. Okay. Now we need to say s8 aligned function name size is align static array size of function name uh, two. Okay, now we need to write it out and then we need to jump this thing. So we say plus equals aligned function name size. So maybe it would be worth it to create a helper function at some point, but for now that is fine. Okay, let's copy. I think I have mem copy somewhere here already. Yep. So that's fine. Actually, we should allocate this instead of just doing buffer occupied. So uh, I would say um, buffer allocate size. Uh, uh, this stuff and then we say function name okay something like this good now we have the next thing which is uh, this stuff. And this stuff is pointed to from 21.3e. So this is uh, this name. So let's do that. Yeah, I think in reality, all of this will be very backwards. I, I really don't, not sure what is the algorithm that is used in uh, MSVC such that they end up lay, laying out this information this way because it's like, as you can see, it's very unnatural. Uh, would be probably much easier to just dump all of this stuff uh, first. And then um, kind of, because you already know the where it will be in the file, you just kind of point to this because here you would need to first uh, like reserve this space and then patch it. Like this seems kind of strange. I, I'm not sure how they do this. Anyhow, uh, let's just continue. So I want to do it this way because uh, this way we can reuse the names, uh, but still going to be called something different. So this is going to be called a library name aligned. I just called aligned name size. Build failed, that's okay. Let's close a bunch of stuff. Okay. Image thunk data sixty four. Buffer allocate size, but this one I know how to fix. This is easy. So let's start with easy one and then fix other errors. Image import descriptor redefinition. Yeah, this is called image thunk. Okay. Uh, conversion from S32. So what, how does align function look like in our code? I already forgot that. So let's just check this out. It is inside of prelude. Align number alignment. This is not a site. Starting to get 
slightly tired, so probably we will not finish all this today, but I think it's uh, some solid progress. Let's run this and see where we end up. Build test. Uh, we go to here and we start looking at this stuff and compare it with what we have in the other place. Mm, not sure what would be the best setup here. Guess something like this works. Okay, so we start uh, fine. We have, yeah, basically till here, it looks fine. It also is here because I think these are just the bytes that we uh, write out. We are missing all of these stuff, but I'm not yet sure exactly what any of this is. So that's, um, it's probably debug information and maybe we can get rid of it. Uh, let's see if that is true. Um, and then the tricky part is over here. So we need to start at F8, so at this stuff and at this stuff, right? And we first look at this one. Actually, it should be like this, I think. Yeah. So 21, that looks good. So at least we figured out the correct struct, I guess. And uh, then we have zeros. Uh, then we have 21, 30 here, which uh, points us to here, which is uh, the right thing, except I forgot to go in the right uh, place. So uh, this is something that needs to be fixed. What else is screwed up? I guess that's about it. Let's regenerate this. Uh, so something is holding the handle. This is not this thing. Ah, okay. I uh, closed the wrong file. It happens. Okay, cool. Pepper, let's try that again. Test. And then another one with the minimal executable that we had before. Okay. And I'm also not putting the right thing. Yeah, so this needs, doesn't need this as 16 and it does not need X, uh, sorry. It's actually in the wrong order. So this should be like this and this should be like this. And then here it is uh, kernel 32 DLL. In reality, we can actually do this uh, lowercase because Windows is case insensitive, but since they say they want to have it um, like this, we can do it like this. I'm also not sure if we need alignment here, but let's just align uh, to be nice people. Okay, let's try that again. Headers, our data, and let's look at this. Okay, this looks much better. Ah, okay, so they use uh, this is very weird. So they use uppercase kernel 32, but then DLL is appended lowercase. Okay, doesn't matter. What matters is actually uh, it looks like this section is. Uh, correct. And this is where it will actually go and where the uh, thunk will be. So in a sense, I'm almost wondering if this will 
work. What if I don't do this and instead I um, remove the debug stuff here and just say that debug is zero. Then we will have import address table and import directory in that section. So maybe that is actually enough. Well, let's try to do this. Okay, I need to I need to close this out. And let's try to run it. If we're lucky, it will work. If we are not lucky, well, we have whole next video to try to figure out what's wrong and if we need any of the other information that is inside of that section. So the moment of truth, we say build and test. Okay, that did not work exactly how we wanted to. Well, I guess it's fine. As I said, we can now start uh, debugging this stuff and maybe I will uh, read some more uh, docs so I'm more prepared for the next video. But for today, we made some progress. We understand now some of this stuff and can think about how to wire all of this. Um, and yeah, that will be it for today. And hopefully next time we will make it all work. For now, thank you very much for watching and see you then.